Hey golf people, I'm excited because I'm about to visit my friends here at Edwin Watts Carrollwood. We're gonna check out all the new Mizuno Pros and see which one is the club for me in 2022. Let's get in there and do it. All right, future Gabe here. Do you see the smile on this guy's face, that bearded weirdo? He thinks he knows exactly what he wants. He's going to the store, he knows what he's gonna get. And let me tell you, he was completely wrong. So you see, I walked into Edwin Watts assuming the characteristics that I'd probably find out by swinging those clubs. But in reality, I've gotta say, I was shocked at the actual results once I swung all three of these clubs. I'm gonna show you those results later, but first, we're gonna take a step back and show you a little bit of the journey I've had with this brand Mizuno, having played these clubs really for the last 30 plus years. So growing up as a kid, I loved playing golf. My father had been in his previous life a golf professional and he put a club in my hand when I was three years old. Loved playing the game, but didn't have a lot of money growing up, so I always just sort of played whatever I could get my hands on. By my teens, I had found some used Titleist set that I was playing with, and as I got into my college years, I really wanted to play better golf. You see, my friends had finally gotten into the game after Tiger Woods had come out on the scene. People were really excited about golf. People were playing a lot more. My friends got jobs at local country clubs, which meant I got to play golf at these really nice places a whole lot more often. Usually they let the caddies play on Mondays, that sort of thing. I was playing a lot more golf and I really want to step up my game. One of my friends actually had a set of Mizuno Tezoids and I hit them a couple of times. They were an older model and I really liked them. I went out and I searched all around Baltimore where I was living at the time and I found myself a set of Mizuno Tezoids, a little newer version. These are the ones you see there on the screen. And I really liked these clubs. They felt good. They gave me a little bit more consistency and they were slightly less forgiving actually, but that was a good thing because I figured at the time I really wanted to push myself. If I could play a harder to hit club, I would get better at golf. And I'm sure a lot of you have had that same thought. Well, I took that another step further the next season when I bought my MP33s from Mizuno and I loved those clubs. They had more forgiveness than you'd think for a blade. And I think that's the beauty of what Mizuno has been able to do with their clubs, but still gave you all those amazing characteristics you get with the blade, the control, the fact that you can work the ball, all of the feel in the world that you could possibly imagine. I really love those clubs. I started hitting these beautiful rising teardrop shots that were very characteristic of those clubs and I had a blast. I started playing the best golf of my life. Well, as the years went on, people got a little older. I started working more, eventually started my own business, had children, got married, had children, in that order. <laughs> I needed to take a little time off of golf, and by the time I got back into golf a few years later, I wasn't striking the ball so sweetly anymore. So, I decided I needed a little help, and I was going to try those old Nike progressive cavity backs, if you remember those clubs, they were very modern at the time they came out in the early 2000s. By the time I got them, they were a few years aged, but still, I always wanted to play those clubs. I really got on well with those clubs for a couple of years, but once again, I felt that Mizuno itch. So I begged my wife one Christmas to buy me the JPX 850 forged. I want that forged Mizuno feel, but with that cavity back that would give me a little extra forgiveness because I wasn't hitting the ball as well as I had been in my younger years. But I still wanted to play good golf and have that Mizuno feel. I loved those clubs, absolutely adored them. And then I got to the point where I started thinking, okay, now it's time to get a little bit more distance. Let's get a little bit more forgiveness. I'm getting even older. And I switched over a few years ago to the Mizuno MP20 HMBs. Absolutely adored those clubs. I always missed my MP33s and the HMBs offered me that Mizuno blade look with a slightly larger leading top edge to be sure because it is actually hollow inside a multi-material construction which made those clubs incredibly forgiving and I still picked up a couple of yards over my 850s. Now having this YouTube channel, I get a chance to test out all sorts of clubs. I actually put the JPX 921 hot metals in the bag, made my own little combo set, 
last summer before switching over to what I'm playing currently, which is actually a tailor-made set of Sim 2s. However, I love Mizuno's, I love that feel, and I really want that feel back. So when Mizuno announced in the fourth quarter of last year, like you, I was super excited for the new clubs because I thought there was the perfect club in this series. And for me, that is the Mizuno Pro 225. That club looks incredible. It's the second iteration of my MP20 HMBs. It has all the same characteristics that make that club perfect. The multi-material construction, the ability to work the ball, the feel, and of course, those Mizuno dashing good looks. With one huge improvement that I thought might have been missing in the HMBs, originally, which is a slightly stronger loft. So now, at the seven iron, these clubs are 30 degrees of loft. They're pressed forward a little bit, and they've been able to move even a little bit more weight down towards the bottom there to still give you the same penetration. At least that's what the marketing material said. So it was time to go out to Edwin Watts. Let's pick up on our story here. Well, as you know, I've taken a couple of months off of golf here because I had my surgery last year. So this was really my first club test of the year. And while I felt really good pain-free as I was swinging those clubs, I took about 30 shots with each, I just don't have the same swing speed I did last year. I'm down about five miles per hour, and so I definitely was not hitting the ball as far. However, I was still just as consistent as last year, so when we analyze the numbers here, you'll be able to see that the swing speed and the types of swings that I took were very, very similar with all of these clubs. Now, I love what Mizuno has done here with this line. They've really made it easy and simple to understand. They've got the 221s, which are basically your blade. It's going to have the thinnest top line. It's going to have the player profile and characteristics. It's going to have maximum feel and workability, and you move up the line. With the 223s, you're right in between. You've got a little bit more of a forgiving cavity back. It's kind of like the MP20 CBs that they came out with a couple of years ago. It's the next generation of those. And then you've got the 225s, which is basically the second generation of the MP20 HMBs. So it makes it a lot more easy to understand, and you can literally, if you're looking down at the top line, kind of see exactly the progression of these clubs. You've got that really thin face of the blade. You've got that intermediary look there with the cavity back, still being able to hide that cavity, which is really nice. And then you've got the thicker, more confidence instilling top line of the 225 there. So the first swings I took were with the 223s. Right off the bat, I really loved the way these felt. In fact, throughout my testing, I thought that this might actually have the best feel of the bunch. It offered really good forgiveness, much better forgiveness than what I was expecting out of really a player's iron. Albeit the whole point of the cavity back is to give you a little bit more forgiveness, but the amount of forgiveness to me was surprising. I feel like it actually rivaled clubs in the game improvement category, clubs I was playing last year, like the JPX 921 Hot Metals, as well as the Sim 2s in terms of the forgiveness factor. Maybe not quite as forgiving, but still the distance even on pretty severe miss hits, because again, I'm just getting back started playing again here. I thought they were pretty darn good. So I was really surprised with those. So after I was feeling pretty good, I stepped up into the 221s and I had a very similar experience to the Mizuno blades that I've played in the past. Obviously the workability is primo. The feel is great on center contact. Not as great when you miss hit it, you know it. Interestingly enough, on my better shots, the spin was down considerably. On normal shots where I hit it pretty well, my spin was in the mid 5,000 RPM range. And when I really striped one, I was in the low 4,000s, which I found kind of interesting. Not exactly sure why, but maybe there are some club fitters that watch this channel that can let me know down below in the comments. They felt really good, but of course the distance was down on these clubs because at 34 degrees at the seven iron, these are the weakest lofted clubs in the bunch. These are for guys that are out on tour that are very low handicaps that swing very fast, much faster than me. In fact, I actually switched to a regular shaft here with these clubs because I noticed my swing speed down and I needed just a little bit more to catch up to the ball there. So I was most excited to save the best for last and my next clubs up were the 225s. They look very similar to my old MP20 HMBs. In fact, if you put those two clubs in my hand, looking down at the top line, I would be 
hard pressed to be able to tell you which was which without actually looking at the back of that club and reading the numbers on the back. Very similar in terms of feel as well to the MP20 HMBs. Having the forged face just gives you a more comfortable impact through the ball. It's that nice buttery feel we come to know and love from Mizuno. As I was taking these swings, I did notice that my distance was not necessarily considerably higher than the 223s. It was definitely up from the 221s, but on par or maybe even lagging a little bit behind the 223s, which surprised me. So when all was said and done, after taking about 30 shots with each, knocking out the real anomalies, really poor miss hits. I distilled everything down to these numbers that I'm gonna show you here on screen. We'll start here with the 221s. My club head speed at 72.4 miles per hour, and you'll see that's very consistent. It's actually the lowest of the three, but all of them were within a mile and a half of each other, so nothing too concerning there. Ball speed, 98.5 miles per hour. My carry distance, 133, which is not necessarily <laughs> confidence instilling, but I will chalk that up to being only a couple of months removed from my surgery, and I'm still not up to 100%, clearly. Total distance, 141 yards. My peak height, 30 yards and backspin 5,309 RPM. Again, these clubs are lofted at 34 degrees. Once again, really like what Mizuno did here in terms of building the lofts and the numbering system. The next clubs up are lofted at 32 degrees at the seven iron. My club head speed with the 223s was 74.1 miles per hour. My ball speed, a scintillating 101.2 miles per hour. My carry distance up four yards over the 221s. It's now at 137 yards. Total distance, 145 yards. Peak height at 31 yards. One yard up from the 221s, which is nice. And backspin a little higher as well at 5,500 RPMs. When we get into the 225s, the clubs I was most excited to swing, my club head speed was 73.4 miles per hour, ball speed leaving the club at 99.8 miles per hour, the carry distance 135, which is actually a little bit lower. However, my club head speed was just ever so slightly lower and total distance the same at 145 yards. Peak height lower by two yards at 29 yards and backspin at 5,590 RPM, basically the same. It's only a 69 RPM difference there from the 223s. So when we look at all three of these together, here are a couple of things that I found to be pretty interesting and not what I would have expected. The most spin was actually with the 225s and the least spin was with the 221s. I didn't expect that. Again, it's only about 200 RPM difference, but it's there. And going into it, I would have thought the 221 spun a little bit higher for some reason. The other thing I found interesting was the peak height of 31 yards was a yard higher than a club that was two degrees weaker. So the 221s at 34 degrees and the 223s at 32 degrees, actually that stronger lofted club flew higher. And I always get comments on videos where I talk about stronger lofts, not necessarily affecting spin and peak height with these new technology clubs. And here is the proof. The proof is right here in front of us that these engineers have been able to change the ball flight characteristics of clubs with stronger lofts. That was definitely interesting to see. My furthest distance was with the 223s. It was the same as the 225s, but four yards further than the 221s. Again, interestingly, even though it's two degrees more lofted than 225s, the distance was the same. And the peak height and stopping power of these clubs is going to be better because they fly higher. Now my swing speed with the 223s was higher than the 225s, but that was negligible. And I would think that this loft would play a little bit more of a role here, but it really didn't. And the other thing that surprised me was I found the 223s to be just as forgiving, if not more forgiving than the 225s, which again, I did not go in expecting that to be the case. So today on Wednesday, January 12th, if I could only go off of the data that I saw and the looks and feel that I saw in shop, I would 100% 
be purchasing the 223s in the Mizuno Pro line. I'd love to know what you think the best clubs would be, and I'd love to find out if you've actually swung these clubs for yourself and you've tested them against each other. Let me know down below in the comments if that's the case. I can't wait to get them out on course. Hopefully by that time, I'll be able to hit a seven iron a little further than 145 yards, and we'll really be able to give it an accurate, fair test up against each other on course. Fingers crossed we could do that in the next couple of weeks and I will re-release another video. I hope you enjoyed this one. If you're new here, please do hit subscribe. It does help and I'll catch you back here very soon on another edition of Let's Play Through.